Okay, welcome back, listeners. And I know you must be getting itchy for that Super Bowl time to come, but hey, you got a little little ways off. So we've got some really informative people to bring you some information. And as I told you at the beginning of the show, we have Mr. Paul Goldstein from Hillside Cemetery. Good morning. Hi, good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Good. I bet you want to get the day over so you can go home for Super Bowl, right? Definitely. Go see, <laughs> go see Hawks. Oh, oh, you exposed yourself. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Where are you from, Paul? I'm born and raised in Los Angeles. Ah, where'd you go to yeah. school? Uh, high school, El Camino, Real, and Woodland Hills. Oh, well, that's where my went son up. went. <laughs> yeah, great school. And then I went up to San Francisco for my college years, and I came back. Very, very good. And so what is your position there at uh, Hillside Cemetery? I'm the general manager. Okay. And uh, why don't you tell our listeners, you know, what you have prepared to talk about today? Um, well, I think what we were uh, planning to talk about was pre-planning and the importance of pre-planning. Um, one of the things that uh, I see, I've been here 10 years now, and and one of the things that I see all the time is, is the, the anguish and the, the time people need to spend um, when they don't plan ahead, um, when they're either coming directly after a, a death to, from the hospital coming here or um, having to spend that time in, instead of being able to start grieving uh, right away. And I, and I think it, it causes a lot of um, disruption in the family. Mm. So what are, what are, I know this is a subject that, you know, people aren't always thrilled about, but, you know, of course for me, you know, my show is the buzz with Betty and everything informative and as well as life, death is, is a part of every day. Um, so how, what is your suggestions for planning for people to plan when they're younger? I, I know I think about it too for uh, you know, our kids, that this wouldn't be a, a burden on them. So what do you suggest? Well, I think the most important thing is, is having communication, communication between the family members, um, the parents letting their children know what their wishes are um, so that even if they don't plan ahead, that everyone's on the same page. Um, one of the, the main issues is if you have, let's say, two different children and no one's ever spoken about what their wishes are. And, and next thing you know, you have two children with different ideas of what should happen to mom, and, and they don't agree. And then that, that causes some, some problems in the family right there. Um, so I think just having that open communication and letting people know, as uncomfortable as it can be at times, it, it's still very important. And having an advanced health care directive as well. Hmm. That's a that's a good bit of information, and I'm sure, like I said, the main thing is for other family members to be prepared and 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 to you know lessen the burden, uh, you know. And I, I know that you know there's a difference. People say, "Oh, what's the difference between Hillside and and Forest Lawn or this one and that one?" and um, Hillside's located where, and what what is your? It, it's mainly for the uh, uh, Jewish population. Is that correct? Uh, correct. So Hillside Memorial Park and Mortuary is is located on Sentinella Avenue. Uh, we're across from the Howard Hughes Center off the 405 Freeway. Um, we've been here since 1941. We're a, a Jewish cemetery and mortuary. Um, however, we. Oh, our, our goal and our, our tagline, so to speak, is keeping families together. So, yes, we are a Jewish cemetery. However, with the, the amount of interfaith marriages these days and going back to even when we started, um, we've always stuck with the fact that we won't separate a couple. We won't separate a family. So we do allow interfaith uh, burial here without any of the other um, religious um, uh, symbolism, but everything here needs to be some, either nothing or, or without uh, a, a symbolism or with Jewish symbolism. Right, so, and this, isn't that the cemetery that is it? Al Jolson is uh, 
very exactly. Deep. You see the big waterfall off the 405 freeway. That's where Al Jolson is uh, buried. Um, he was brought here in the 50s, and uh, yeah, they built that big monument to him. Uh, it's very, it's, it's beautiful, and it is what we've been known for for many years. I know today in today's times, when you say that to a lot of the youth, they look and they said, "Who?" <laughs> you know, it's like yes, we, we hear that a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, okay, you know, when you're a certain age, you know who everybody is, and beyond that, you know, it's like it's like I don't know. Sometimes I just slip and I say to somebody about a phone booth, and they kind of look at me like I'm some creature from outer space and says, "A phone booth? What is that?" And then I would say, "Well, you know the." the that glass box that Superman changed his clothes in and then they look at me and said, Superman, who's that? So, you know, it, it kinda tells you where you're at. I was born and raised in West Los Angeles, so I mean I I certainly do know where that is and totally aware of Al Joson and, you know, it, it's really interesting because when I do drive on the freeways, whether, you know, it's passing Mount Sinai, I say wave and say hello to this one. There, the old side, I wave and say hello to that one. It's like, you know, it's very familiar to people in L.A. But um, how does that relate to the desert? Can you give our listeners a little bit of background on that? Sure. So we we do um, many many people are are born in L.A. or moved to L.A. Los Angeles and and as they retire they have moved out to the desert. So uh, we it, on a regular basis we are dealing with people who who eventually do pass away that are living out there who've already pre-planned here or still have their kids in L.A. or you know so they'll they'll come back back to Hillside. Uh, we do a, a significant amount of, of of funerals from from there, mm. so so it's not an unusual thing, and that's one of the reasons we're you know we, we participate out out in that area because there are so many people from Los Angeles that now live out there. Right, and I know you're gonna you're a participant in the Canada Snowbird Fest, exactly. and um, you know all kinds of people even. People that are new here from, you know, other states who, you know, a lot of people say, well, this is my final resting place. You know, I'm not I'm not going back home to New York or I'm not going back home to Ohio or to Detroit or whatever. So it's, it's informative for you to make uh, our locals, our Canadians, our snowbirds aware that you exist where you exist and... Uh, you know, what you have to offer, your services are quite complete. Is that correct? Uh, yes. So we have a mortuary, what some people may refer to as a funeral home. So, uh, in, in California and Los Angeles, we call it a mortuary. But we have a mortuary and a cemetery, so we are full service. Um, one of the advantages of that is you can do everything and take care of everything in one place. So um, if you use a different mortuary versus and then still use our cemetery, um, when you do pass away, you call somewhere else. So at that point, we just become uh, the cemetery. However, then there's more logistics involved. And, and it's, it's, as with most things, if you can do it all in one place, it's simpler, it's more efficient, it's usually more cost-effective as well. So it's a one-stop shop. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Interesting way to put it, but it is a one-stop shop, and uh, you know we don't like to go shopping there, but uh, you know it's it's part of life. Uh, there's a beginning and there's an end to everything, and even on that note, as we talk about beginnings and ends, I want to thank you for being on the show today and uh, letting our listeners know all about you, what you have to offer and letting them know if they want to, you know, get into more depth with you to attend the Canada Snowbird Fest, come by and, and talk to you in person and answer any questions that they may have. Um, and I, I really thank you so much for getting up early on Sunday to be with us on the show. And uh, I hope you enjoy the Super Bowl and 
you know, I'm going to be impartial here, but, you know, if the Seahawks win, then I'm going to be thinking about you that uh, oh, thank you. you called the shots and uh, say hi to Jeff Schaefer for me. Uh, I've been dealing with him. I have his first time dealing with you. And uh, I look forward to seeing you on February 28th and March 1st at the Canada Snowbird Fest. So, yeah, thank you, thank you for having me on the show, and and you know, people are are more than welcome to give me a call, and and I'll answer any questions that they have. Do you have a phone number you can give our listeners? Sure, we have our eight hundred number, so it's eight hundred five seven six one nine nine four. Okay, want to repeat it one more time? Sure, eight hundred five seven six one nine nine four. And who do they ask for, you or Jeffrey? Uh, they can ask for myself, Paul Goldstein, or they can ask for Jeff Schaefer. Okay. And we'll, we'll both be here and, and happy to help. All right. And like I said, I'm going to look forward to meeting you in person, shaking your hand at the Canada Snowbird Fest. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye.